So here we have the os coxae, normally known as the hip bone. Now, we know that this big hole is going to be for the femur, and that our femur is like that. So you can automatically tell that this is going to be the posterior side, and this is going to be the anterior side. So, telling from that, it's definitely left hip bone. So let's start with the top anteriorly. We have our anterior superior iliac spine, or the ASIS, okay? We're actually going to go a little bit over right here, which is the iliac crest. It's basically the top of the bone, okay? Really easy. So anterior superior iliac spine, we go right under it. Another big prominence is the anterior inferior iliac spine. So it's just inferior to the ASIS. We're going to move posteriorly and figure out the spines right there. We have the posterior superior spine and the posterior inferior spine. So you can already tell there's a pattern. Superior, inferior, superior, inferior. These two are the, are the anterior ones. These two are the posterior ones. Okay. Now, we have a gluteal surface and an iliac fossa. If this is your femur attachment, and this is the left, this would be your gluteal surface. Now, the gluteal surface has three lines, and on a good hip bone, you'll probably see them. Probably not gonna be on the test because they're really hard to see, but you basically have your anterior uh, line, your posterior line, just because, sorry, I'm getting mixed up. <laughs> anterior, posterior, and then there's an inferior line. Honestly, don't worry about these because they're probably not gonna be asked. Um, then, gluteal surface, just flip it over, and we have our iliac fossa, where our hip flexor is, the iliopsoas muscle. This is your iliac fossa. Um, We've been talking about the femur placement. This big thing is called the acetabulum, and it actually split up into three, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but it's three parts to it. The iliac part, the ischial part, and the pubic part of the acetabulum. All three bones connect here. So after the acetabulum, let's go back, set us up into a left hip. And this right here is the auricular surface. We talked about this auricular surface before. We have an auricular surface, which is shaped like an ear, on the sacrum. Now, here it's on the iliac, uh, the ilium bone of the hip bone. So auricular surface, and then iliac tuberosity, right there. Just this big bump is your iliac tuberosity. Okay? So... That's basically your ilium and all the landmarks there. We're going to move inferiorly now to the ischium. Now we have a ramus of the ischium, and the ramus is the lower part of the obturator foramen. This is the obturator foramen, and this is the ramus of the ischium, okay? There's actually three different ramus. There's the ischial ramus, there's the superior pubic ramus and the inferior pubic ramus. Okay, the pubic bone connects superiorly and inferiorly, and that's why it has two rami. This one, only the ischium has one ramus, and that's just the ischial ramus. We're gonna get an acetabular part of the ischium, so basically all this portion right here, if we were to shade that in, is the ischial part of the acetabulum. Let's move to the posterior, and we'll find this big thing, which is called the greater sciatic notch. Basically, you're going to have nerves running through it. Greater sciatic notch. Once you hit this big prominence, that's your ischial spine. And then right under that ischial spine, on a good bone, you'll see a nice little dip here. That, that'll be your lesser sciatic notch. Greater sciatic notch is superior to the ischial spine. Lesser sciatic notch is inferior to the ischial spine. Um, we then find our, again, obturator foramen. 
ischial tuberosity, you can palpate this on yourself, it's just your sitting bone, okay? When you're sitting, this is the bone that's on, on, the, on the butt, okay? And then the body is, the great, best way to look at the body is just look at the anterior surface. That would just be the body of the ischium, okay? So again, body, ramus, if you were looking at the anterior part, we go posteriorly, we'll find the ischial tuberosity, still the ramus, same one, acetabulum, ischial spine, lesser sciatic notch is inferior, and anterior is the greater, or sorry, superior is the greater sciatic notch. And we're going to move on to the pubis. Pubis has a couple of things as well, but I already mentioned some of them. We have a superior ramus and an inferior ramus. These are basically like the arms that connect to the, the rest of the bone. We have a pubic symphysis, which is thus, it's usually like a smooth part here, which connects to the other hip bone that's going to be around here. Okay, so pubic symphysis. The bony prominence superior to that is the pubic tubercle. Okay, so symphysis and pubercle in the same area the tubercle is more superior and it's just the tip there. Um, after that, we still have your obturator foramen. Okay, it's mentioned a couple of times. Then the pubic part of the acetabulum. <coughs> our body of the pubi pubis is just, you know, ramus, ramus, body. We'll flip it around again. Ramus, ramus, body. Now, these are the two things that most people get confused about. There's a pitineal line and an obturator crest. Easiest way to figure out obturator crest? Well, if this is my obturator foramen, then the crest right above it is my obturator crest. This is the crest that's running basically from the acetabulum down to the uh, pubic symphysis or the pubic tubercle, okay? Right next to the obturator foramen. If we go right here where the iliac fossa is this line right here is our pectineal line okay it's a really sharp groove right here you can tell that it's not connected in any way to the obturator foramen that'll be your pectineal line just make sure that you don't think this is the obturator crest just because it's on the obturator foramen it's actually right here right next to the acetabulum <coughs>